Hey, what's up guys? It's Beja at Baker Hill Farm. I have something to show you in the garden today. Something that's about to bloom and it's not the girl escapes. That's the title of this video, but it's one of my favorite flowers. Look at that gladiolus. Oh, it's about to bloom. We've got another one over here thinking about it. Okay, aren't those beautiful? I love gladiolas. So we're back over by the garlic. The garlic is wanting to bulb, but we want to make sure that it's super flavorful and really big or as big as it can get. And in order to do that on my hard neck varieties, I have to cut the garlic scape. So your soft neck varieties are not going to grow this scape, but your hard necks will. And basically what it is, is it's a shoot that comes off your garlic. So let me show you. Okay, so you can see my regular garlic leaves here. They're flat. Now in the center of my hard neck garlic, I have this stem. Now it's solid, it's round, and it does this little curl thing. Now here at the end, this will actually bloom into a flower and put off seed. Okay, so any plant, when it puts off its seed to reproduce, it has to use a lot of energy to do so. So if you're growing, say, like a root vegetable or a root crop, I guess that's what you would call it because you actually eat the bulb of the garlic. Um, if you let it go to seed and it's putting all of that energy into the flower, then you're going to have a smaller garlic or carrot or whatever. And it's not going to be as flavorful. So you definitely want to harvest these scapes. Now, the awesome thing is these are absolutely delicious. If you've never had garlic scapes and you are growing hard neck garlic, eat them. They're so good. You can saute them up. You can make a pesto. They have like a mild garlicky flavor. They're absolutely delicious. Um, you can even saute them with like butter and salt and eat them as a side on their own. That's probably what I'm going to do this evening. So just get you a pair of scissors these are not garden scissors these are like pioneer woman scissors from walmart and then a bowl and i'll show you how simple this is okay so can you see right here you're just gonna cut it that's it and then you're gonna have this beautiful delicious little pigtail garlic situation and you're gonna love it so let's do this this is the garlic I just cut, and I want to show y'all. Look how big this bulb already is. Now, by cutting this, it's just going to get even bigger, so that's pretty awesome. Now, I mostly grow a hard neck variety, Tizan. It's a turban-style garlic. It's phenomenal. It does really good in my area. And the cool thing about hard neck garlic is you're getting two harvest from it. So you're getting the scape and then you're getting the actual bulb. So I love growing hard neck. When new gardeners, people who are new to gardening ask me, what should I grow as my first crop? You might be surprised to know that I don't say tomatoes. I don't say peppers. I say garlic. Garlic is so easy to grow. You literally put it in the ground, plant it and forget about it. Um, and I feel like it just provides an overall good experience for a first time gardener. I've never known anyone to grow garlic for the first time and it'd be a complete failure if they planted it at the right time and harvested it at the right time. Tomatoes, peppers, those kind of things, um, they can be a little bit bougie as to what kind of soil they like. And so... I just tell people garlic. I have done nothing to this garlic at all. The only thing I did was plant it in the ground, probably in October, late October, early November. And then I came through and mulched it when the leaves fell with leaves. Um, you don't even have to do that. Last year I used hay, same results. Um, I've been growing from my own stock since, I got this stock in 2020. So it's 2023, so I replanted it 2021, and then 2022. So I've been growing from it two years, and 
it's done phenomenal. Okay, so I'm done. I'm not sure how long that took, long enough. And I've got this entire brown paper bag full of garlic slips. So I'm glad I did that because I was able to make a few observations. Um, I can't remember if I've shared this, but so I have three rows of garlic planted on their own. And then here, I have garlic interplanted with strawberries. And there, I have, see, wait, there, yeah, that row. I have garlic interplanted with strawberries. So the row that I just showed you, that last row, is not doing as well as the row in the front. Um, the differences are, that row, I actually added sand to those strawberries to amend the soil to be a better growing environment for strawberries. I did about a third of sand in that row. Also, that row is like on a hill. So the ground there is like this. And I don't know if maybe the pine, um, the wood chips, like the rain and the runoff is causing some nitrogen deficiencies possibly, or if it's the sand. So just an observation I made, all of the garlic scapes over there were like this. They weren't even curled yet. And I should have cut these garlic scapes like a long time ago. I see one I missed. I'm gonna show you how long the other ones are. So these are how big my the ones I have in the rest of the garden are. The ones from over there were like, like I couldn't even cut some of them. So, interesting. Uh, just something that I'm gonna be watching for. I, I love to really observe my garden when I am harvesting because you can kind of see where you're lacking, what you need to change, all of that sort of thing. And the weeds in my garden are like so bad. So I have a lot of weeding to do, a lot of cleanup in the garden. Uh, it's never ending. But yeah, that's the video for today. I hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.